going to sing it in German. Who speaks German? <laughs> Nobody. You do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the key, because neither do we. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's, uh, the words are uh, in these various pieces that he wrote, uh, the cantatas. This is from 78. So I wrote over 200 of them, even more than that, didn't you? Do you know he wrote a cantata because he was every a church Sunday. organist? Every Sunday he would yeah. have a new cantata. So it was it's just amazing. We Anne and I think he must have had all his children writing out all the parts. Yes, he had a lot of children. He had, lot of children. He had two wives. Anyway, the Not at the same time, <coughs> one after the other. Well, he had two wives at the same time. One, one, one I think he wore out and the next day it came. But anyway. but Yes, go on. What, what, we, what we are singing, the English translation is horrible to sing, so which is why we picked the German one, because it fits so much better. But the words are, we hasten with feeble but diligent footsteps, O Jesus, O Master, O Jesus, O Master, for help unto thee. And uh, then it goes on the similar sort of words. Um, it repeats them all. Uh, over and over, oh Jesus, oh Master, for help unto thee. So you probably begin to learn this as we go on. Feeble but diligent footsteps, etc., etc. So that's what it is. But then he has a, a middle section. You know, this is Baroque music, A, B, A. And so it goes back to the first, so you're going to hear a bit of it twice, so be prepared. <laughs> that the, the second bit changes in the feeling, and uh, it is, thou, ten thou tenderly seekest the sick and the erring, and uh, thou tenderly seekest the sick and the erring. You will hear this many times. And then- and he does it differently every time. <laughs> different, yeah. And then, I love the, I love the ach, because it's so Scottish. Uh, <laughs> but it's actually, ah, hear us, but we, we will say, ach. <laughs> And uh, hear us, oh hear us, we lift up our voices. For succor and pray, we pray unto thee. So that's basically the words, but he repeats the same thing over and over again. He had to write so many, I'm not surprised that um, he repeated <laughs> himself a little bit. I think, he, I think he thought it was a challenge. I'll take these few words and I'll think of so many ways of expressing it. Because it is, we, we, we hasten with eager footsteps. It is, it, it is great joy that you are doing this, it is with great joy. And I have something very special to tell you because he's sitting there, it's that gentleman there in this sort of pinky red jumper. Stand <laughs> up, Ian, please. Ian. Stand oh. up, please, oh. Ian. Oh, she <laughs> don't your back. Now, when I first met Ian, I was new in Sydney in 1962 and uh, I met Ian and uh, he took me home to have coffee with him and he played me cantata number 78 with this piece. And I thought, anyone who loves Bach, I'll hang on to him. This is, this is absolutely fantastic, because I never met a man who liked classical music that I was interested in, shall we say, or who was interested in me. But <coughs> Ian was. And I discovered he had a collection of Bach. Uh, he had trumpet cantatas and all sorts of gorgeous things. So. We sat there and we had coffee and a little glass of something and we listened to Bach. So when and he said, come up and see my collection. <laughs> he, meant, <laughs> he meant Bach, he definitely he meant Bach. Yeah. So there you are, it's a little chapter of my life. So for one thing, this is the most gorgeous duet he's it ever is, written, I think. It's and it's a challenge, isn't it? It is a challenge. I'm, I'm speaking to our pianist. If you really want to admire a good pianist, watch how he plays. It's just amazing how he, he manages this piece. Because Bach was not easy. It's really a trio, Tim. You it, get you just as much credit as we do. So. so we're very pleased to have you, Tim. We really are. Okay.